person I think in here that would apply to is the disaster relief training, and he's already trained, so he doesn't have to go, but that's October 6th and 7th. If you or if you know someone else that might be interested in taking uh, Georgia Baptist disaster relief training, and that involves a lot of things from cooking to chainsaws, so everything in between. Uh, the whale is a women a women's uh, gathering, worship, teaching, fellowship. Uh, it's a Tuesday night, October the 10th at 7 p.m. Uh, contact the church if you're interested in that. And I think that's pretty much all that pertains to us. Um, I saw a, uh, I'm just going to share that. I saw a, no, no, I didn't see. Oh, it was sent to me a, a billboard for a church. And I thought it was very good. So that's why I, uh, I thought I'd share it. It says, you know what God left out of the Bible? Your opinion. So I thought that was pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. That's uh, very good, yes. Uh, there were several of us in Wednesday night service. I know Willine. Grady, uh, uh, Tom, and myself were there, and I don't know how I don't know about them. It came to, but for me, that was as good a Bible study is at least as good as I've ever. Been. I won't say it's the best. There's never a best, I guess, but it was outstanding. I, I think what they're calling, you know, we don't have a, a true chapel service like we used to. I think they're calling it church theology or something now. They have a, a name for that. And uh, uh, Gary is an outstanding teacher, and he's been going through it. I think mail is going to start next week or this week, whatever, however I do that. But last week, you know, it's, it's good when it touches you. <laughs> and so it touched me, so it was good. But uh, it was just outstanding. So we've got a lot of good things going on Wednesday nights if you're not involved in it. Um, I'll talk about the Christmas party here in just a second. We're just going to just highlight it. We're going to take a take an opinion poll, I guess, next week or make decisions next week. Um, as uh, Martha said, SALT is on the 10th, or no, the 12th, October the 12th. Uh, so be sure to sign up for that. Um, unfortunately, Kay and I will be gone again uh, for that one. Uh, on... October 15th, we're having a multilingual worship service. Uh, we've had those in the past. Uh, they've generally been at night, if I recall, but this one's at 1045, so uh, be just be aware of that. Uh, that same night, uh, the Jonesboro Orchestra concert will be held from 6 to 7.30, obviously in the uh, sanctuary. And the Fall Family Festival I put it down as Saturday, two to five, but I forgot I put down which Saturday it is. So to, to be continued. I think it's the uh, yeah. I, I'm, it's not. It, it's it's a distance away from uh, yeah. Halloween. It's uh -huh. not associated with Halloween. So uh, uh, to be to be continued, I guess. Good morning, Miss Mary. Um. Just the, just the folks that I, I basically know about. Marshall, talked with him yesterday. Uh, went to the doctor Friday. Uh, they took blood tests to be gotten you know, later, you know, find out about that. And that is related to his uh, kidney. So that'll get him getting up there on his kidney this coming week. And he also was at the eye doctor's because of diabetes and stuff. And the eye doctor said uh, he was doing very well. He readily admits he does not exercise, and he's not going to get better if he doesn't exercise. So I, I encourage him every, whatever way I can. I'm sure his wife's about to kill him, but uh, he just, you know, for whatever reason, he's just choosing not to, uh, to exercise regularly. Uh, for any of those who know Paul and Jenny Vaughn, uh, long-term members here, uh, Paul's been in the hospital. He has pneumonia. Um, for those, again, for those that have been around here a long time, John and Miriam Bora, uh, several months ago or so, they both got COVID pretty badly. Of course, John has been in really bad health for a long time. Uh, so they've both gotten over uh, the COVID. John is in a rehab. 
because of his generally uh, health condition, general health condition, and Miriam is back at home. They moved up to the north side or Cobb County or somewhere up that way uh, to be closer to their children or one of their children. Again, long-term members, Gil and Nancy George. Uh, Nancy has had several issues. Uh, she's been in and out of the hospital. She's now in a rehab, and, uh, and I've been told she's doing very, very well. Uh, Ann Gooch uh, is, had some visitors this past week that made a report and said that she's doing uh, you know, wonderful for being in, in home hospice. Uh, she loves visitors. If, uh, if you're interested, if you're a visiting type person, uh, she'd love to have you. Uh, call first. If you don't have a number, call Martha. Martha has a number, so uh, that'll be good there. Uh, Dan and Jan Robertson. Uh, Dan's been a long time teacher, deacon, everything. Uh, you know, he had some strokes here a little while back and uh, has recovered most everything except he has some cognitive difficulties from the stroke. Mm-hmm. His physical has come back, and so that's what he is still dealing with is the cognitive issues from it. Uh, if y'all remember Frost and Thelma Ward, uh, Frost died a number of years ago. Uh, Thelma died uh, this past week and was at her services, I think on Thursday, if I recall, one day. Um, did I say everything I needed to say? I'm guessing I did. Okay. Um, we talked about the Christmas party last week. We gave an idea. As I told Vicki uh, uh, Sunday, stuff like that is the reason I hate being up here because it acts. I, it seems to me that I am telling you what I think we need to do, and I am just a member making a suggestion. So I hate that I come across as I'm telling y'all what y'all need to do. I'm not. But we had a suggestion last week. Uh, <laughs> You remember the dates? The October the uh, uh, December 9th. December 9th. We threw out a date of December the 9th <coughs> over in the rock. Um, from we we and we've already rented it just because or reserved it just because you got to do it. But if we change it, all we got to do is cancel that and and do whatever we're going to do next. Uh, our suggestion was that uh, we find a caterer. Uh, I think Rennell was going to make give us a suggestion. If you have a suggestion. If you have any suggestion, you want to change anything, you want to do away with, don't even want to have a party. That's your opinion. That's and that's your opinion is as good as anyone else's. So we're gonna we're gonna make a decision next week about that uh, how we want to do it. But one thing I did leave off last week that I'd forgotten uh, is that I was going to make a suggestion that whatever we do, if, if we do something along those lines, uh, let's set a, a price, and I, let me just throw it out, say $20, $15 per person, whatever it is, and if it comes above that, let the class funds pick up so we're not putting a burden on any one person in this class. If they, you know, I don't know who you afford what, I'm not, none of my business don't care. Uh, so let's just let's make it easy on everybody in the class funds pick it up, but that's something the class will decide next week. But keep in mind the suggestion we threw out next week. You give your suggestions and we'll we'll make a decision. But December the ninth, in the upper level of the rock, like we did a couple of years ago, I think it last was year. Last, year. last year was the last year we was up to the upper level, and uh, have it catered. Or, you know, we can class provide a meet and people bring stuff. But we're going to have it catered. We talked about uh, us bringing desserts and drinks and just have the caterer bring the food. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's to be decided by the class and decided uh, by the caterer, too. You know, they, they, have, they have their options. So that's all I'm going to say about that for the time being. Okay, anybody else got anything to say? Add. Prayer request. Okay. Fuddled this morning for some reason. Yes. I, we did not get this on the prayer list, but I got a text late yesterday afternoon 
uh, uh, from Shirley to Conrad's son, mm -hmm. Bernard. 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 That his mom, Shirley Kennard, is at Sacred Journey Hospice mm -hmm. in, off Jodico Road. That she fell a couple of weeks ago and broke her hip and continues her rapid decline. And he just asked that mm -hmm. the class remain in prayer for her. Mm -hmm. Certainly glad. You don't that know where that is. What's the name of it? It's a Peach Drive. Peach Drive, yeah, off of Jodico. Mm -hmm. On the other side of 75. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I had a praise. I had um, my cardio version was Monday, and um, it went well. So I'm back in rhythm, and I uh, thank everyone for their prayers and thoughts and everything else. So I'm okay. I also would ask a prayer for a friend of mine. His name is Guy Jones. Uh, say it again. It's Guy Jones, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, I was asking for prayer for him. I, I didn't pick up that name. Guy. Guy. Guy Jones. Guy Jones. Okay, that's, I, I'm hard of hearing. Yeah, okay. Guy and Jones. actually, it's for his son. He had a, um, and I don't know his son's name. That's sad. Um, but Lord he knows. had a major car accident, and he's in a coma. Mm -hmm. um, he's a high school student. He's a high school football mm -hmm. student. So I'm asking for prayer that um, he can come out of the coma. So, right. Guy Jones' son. Yeah. All right. All right. Phil. I've got several. Um, my next door neighbor, Colonel Michael, he was a colonel in our army, and uh, his wife died on Wednesday. She had Alzheimer's, and she's, she's been having a lot of problems for a long time. She used to come visiting it, all the neighbors in the neighborhood trying to get in their houses. And uh, but she finally became bedridden and she died on Wednesday. So prayers for him. He's doing pretty well. I talked to him a little while on Friday, and uh, he seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, they're 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 believers, so he, he totally believes she went to heaven. So he's okay with that. She was suffering pretty bad. Uh, prayers for my sister-in-law Tanya Grease, just like it sounds, Grease. Uh, she is having surgery, major surgery on her elbow that she hurt when she was in Colorado and she fell on a mountain. And um, she's having surgery. Um, so, and then prayers for Debbie and I because we're traveling to uh, Florida to be with her mom while uh, Tony goes through the surgery uh, tomorrow. And we'll be gone probably for three to four weeks. I will miss you. Good. Thank you, Phil. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Phil. I've got Sarah from uh, Carolyn Nichols. You may have know she's a longtime member here. Just September, she said several deaths in the family and um, just going through a rough month. So, but she keeps a smiling. Good. So, um, hopefully, she'll be able to come back next week because she's got something to do with the death this week. Um, and then my son and daughter-in-law were headed my way uh, from North Carolina and they came up on several things near one another that they were sure they were not going to make it. Mm -hmm. The trucks and all and but somehow a good Lord came through, and they came through without any injuries, and so, and just so many things that we hear on TV, the violence and all. Oh, that's just, right. <laughs> yeah. No one else. Charlotte Davis, her granddaughter had a baby and it had a stroke in the process of being born. Mm. And they don't know, know what's going on with that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Something I had mentioned, you know, um, Phil mentioned and Mary just uh, her commenting about things happening. I mean, there's, uh, you know, Disasters happen every day, I guess, around the world. 
Uh, but you know, uh, a few weeks ago, that terrible flood in Libya. Uh, but the earthquake in Morocco, and the reason I'm emphasizing, think, thinking about that is uh, where that happened, we had a mission team there uh, several years ago doing some work on uh, some schools up in the uh, up in the Atlas Mountains. And so uh, that area that, that our teams worked in uh, around was heavily devastated. Uh, the missionaries there uh, have, you know, sent pictures and whatnot. And uh, so, uh, you know, for those of us that were there, you know, obviously it's, uh, it's hits home a little more than just average. So, uh, so we've been in prayer for that. So with them and all that's going on there. But that thing in Libya, that was just amazing, but they're all amazingly bad. So anything else? Yes, ma'am. Twenty third of Friday is the day my <laughs> it's the day my cousin is having that brain that brain put in my brain. So he told me to call her. her name is Carol. Carol? Yeah. Okay. Last name? <laughs> you would ask me that. <laughs> That's okay. Unimportant. It yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay, I can spell it for you. That's <laughs> the time I can't pronounce it. Yeah. All right. Anything else we need to know about? Oh, guys, for running late, I talk too much. Let's go, to the Lord, in prayer. The Lord, again, we stand here before you, just uh, praising your name, Lord. Uh, there's only two things that Jesus asks us to do, and that's to love the Lord and to love our neighbors. Lord, we, we show our, one way one way we show our love is just to gather here as fellow believers and to worship and to go through your word and to apply it to ourselves. Uh, just like uh, the, the services on Wednesday, how, how uh, uh, Gary made it so applicable to our lives and how, how we should live our lives. It, it was, for me, it was, a, it was an amazing, amazing time to be in church. So I thank you for this time and certainly for all that Kirby and Debbie do for the class. Kirby's uh, uh, intensive study and how he, he knows uh, how, to, how to translate what he learns to us uh, through this time. But we thank you for this church. You know, we read so, there are just so many highlights that our church has that, uh, uh, for things, for our members and for our communities, uh, festivals and and uh, grief counseling and pickleball tournaments and uh, luncheons for older people. Uh, Lord, it just goes on and on and on. And it's so, so rewarding to be involved in a church like this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our staff, and uh, we know they're busy and they travel, and so just watch over them and uh, keep them safe, and uh, may they always be in your will, Lord. Sometimes uh, even even staff gets a little off skew, just like uh, the body, and that they, they uh, just it, it comes a time when we need to just uh, stop and reflect on where where are where we're standing uh, with you. And we thank you for our staff and we love them. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord, for our, our continual prayer list, we certainly lift all of them up. Uh, uh, Harry and Evelyn and Hoyt and uh, uh, Terry, Lord, uh, they're constantly on our minds. Mm -hmm. Marshall and his recovery, Lord, we hope one day that he'll be able to walk through that door and, and greet us all again. Uh, Lord, thankful we at least have an update on Shirley and... Uh, uh, just continue to just to be with her, her family going through this this time. We know that uh, these times are leading to the end of times, and we're just so happy to know that she's saved and that uh, one day her life will be better than it is today. Mm -hmm. Lord, for these new uh, new prayer requests or the things that we talked about today, for Tana and her good reports. We thank you for that. We've been praying for her and uh, asking you to watch over her and heal her and uh, Lord that's headed in the right direction and that is such a positive thing. 
for her friend Guy Jones's son, who was in the car wreck and the coma. Uh, we're praying for for them or for that family, and especially for the young man. For Phil's prayer request to his neighbor, whose wife died, Colonel Michael, uh, just be with him as in this loss and the rest of the family is. Uh, no matter what the circumstances, how long a person's been sick, no matter where they've been, Lord, uh, that that time of life is always difficult. Uh, for uh, Tanya Grease uh, and uh, her upcoming surgery, for Phil and Debbie uh, headed to Florida, just be with them as they travel and as they're looking after her mother and just uh, bless that entire situation. Uh, for marriage prayer requests for Carolyn uh, Nichols and uh, uh, for her son and daughter-in-law and their situation, thank you that it came through unscathed. And we just lift all these up. Uh, for Charlene Davis, the, the baby, uh, her, her baby that had a, had a stroke, Lord, we don't understand these things, but hopefully that uh, the doctors and everyone are right on top of it and everything will turn out well in the end. And then finally for Willing's uh, cousin, Carol, uh, her surgery coming up this Friday, we just pray that all goes well. Be with the doctors, nurses, everyone that's involved, the person that cleans the room to make sure that there are no germs there when they do operate. We, we don't take any of these things lightly. And Lord, as always, we know that there's unspoken prayer requests uh, and we lift them all up uh, as people in their hearts right now, or even saying, yes, Lord, please please help me in this situation. <clears throat> Lord, I pray for the upcoming service and uh, uh, the speaker, and uh, just uh, we're always hoping that there are lost people in our audience that are gonna hear the message and make a, a decision. They always make a decision. We, we hope they make the right decision because decisions are always made, either good or bad. Lord, as we, leave this place today after the uh, after the church service and we enter into the world we're always praying that you'll give us an opportunity to share the joy of Jesus whether it's actual witnessing uh, uh, presenting the gospel to somebody or whether it's just being kind uh, we always can practice being kind so help us in that uh, in that time uh, Lord, uh, we love you. We thank you for those that are here, all of us that are here. And uh, we're looking forward to what you have to talk, tell us uh, uh, through Kirby's message and all these things we ask in our precious name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. If you're comfortable with the uh, way the class is arranged this morning, then uh, uh, don't get too comfortable. It'll probably be changed next week. We're still looking for the. We're, we're trying to find a couple more of the small tables so that we can put three in the center so we can put the longer tables on the sides. Uh, and we just haven't come up with quite the right mix of tables and configuration, so it may be different again next week, but uh, but we're getting there. And you're not going to give up. And I'm not going to give up till we get there. I, I, listen, trust me, Lanny, that's why he pulled me out of the, he, he was looking for tables, and he told me, well, I think we got some similar to that up in the resource room. I donated six tables to the resource room, three small ones and three long ones. All right, well, we, uh, we'll we be in the resource room checking that out. That Lanny, Lanny was up there. Everybody, everybody get your smile, well, your face. It's not a smiley face. I, I, yeah, I, I, I can't help but, but laugh when I look at that. I, I teach, uh, I do some training, and the lady I train with tells the story of uh, uh, a fellow in the town she used to work in that had a convenience store called Grumpy's. And it had grum Grumpy's, that was the name of it. And it had a face similar to this on the sign and underneath it said, have a day. 
So, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to take this home, stick it on your mirror in the bathroom. When you look in the mirror and you see yourself in this, turn it around and read the back side of it to, to remind you that God didn't create you just to have a day. He created you to have an awesome day every day. Have you reached that uh, stage in life where uh, your calendar seems to revolve around doctor's appointments, funerals? Well, I I have to confess, I am old and I am stubborn. And if you don't believe me, ask Debbie, who's over there, amen already. <laughs> And I have been convicted this week. You get over it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah. <coughs> Our church, the 1st of September, started a new sermon series on Alive and Connected. And in conjunction with that, uh, most of the other Sunday school classes are doing Sunday school lessons that parallel the sermon lessons. But it started the week that Debbie and I were away, and so I just didn't do that. I thought, we're doing what we like to do. And God has convicted me this week that I'm doing what I like to do. I'm not doing what he called me to do. So, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to focus each week. We're going to start this morning with two of these. If you look over there on the board, uh, it's broken into two series. The Gathered church and the sent church and then there's weekly subcategories though I realize I only put four into the first and there's five I'll have to fix that after Sunday school yeah. but we're going to focus on two of those uh, items each week until we catch up and to the extent after we get through each week with those we have time left We'll go back to Samuel and we'll continue our study in Samuel. But God's called us as a body. He's called us as a church. He didn't call us as a Sunday school class. He didn't call us just as a Bible study. And so uh, he has convicted me that that's what I need to be doing. And even though most everyone in this class has a lifetime of experience in church and going to church. Sometimes we need to periodically go back and rethink and restudy and remember why we do that. Why, why do we have church? Why do we have this body? Why do we assemble as Believers, well, if if you go all the way back to Genesis, in, in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 and 3, God starts to lay out his plan for the church. In chapter 12, it says, The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. And I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. The important part, the most important part of that is the last thing God says. God didn't call Abram to make Abram famous. 
He didn't call Abram to make his name great, make Abram's name great. He didn't call him to make him a great nation. He called him so that he could lead a people to save the nations. God's plan all along has been to choose a person, to call a people, to reach the nations. It, we, we see him doing it again in Exodus 3.10 when he calls Moses. In Exodus 3.10, he tells Moses, He says, so now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. God calls a people. And he calls a people for the very specific purpose of taking the good news, sharing the gospel, of bringing to the rest of a lost world the salvation that he has provided to those that he calls. In Matthew 16, 18, God has, I mean, Jesus has asked the disciples, who do you say I am? And the disciples are telling him, no, first he asked, who do the people Say I am. Who do people out there say I am? And the disciples say, well, you know, some of them say you're this, some of them say you're that. And he says, well, who do you think I am? Who do you say I am? And Peter speaks up and he says, you are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. And, and, and Jesus in response says, upon this rock I will build my church. Now, we focus on that rock. We, we often and talk about what did Jesus mean when he says upon this rock. There are some denominations that, that believe that he meant Peter, that he was calling Peter that rock. We believe that he meant Peter's declaration. Your declaration that I am the Messiah, the Son of God, that that is the foundational belief of the church and that is the rock upon which the church... But we don't focus on that word church. When Jesus says that, he uses the Greek <coughs> word ecclesia. Now, at the time, in Jesus' time, there were two words. Actually, Jesus would use the Aramaic word. The Septuagint translates it into the Greek. Uh, but there were two common words. One was synagogue. And one was Ecclesia. Synagogue meant that body of believers in the, in the Jewish community. But that term synagogue had by that time started to not just refer to the body of believers, but to the building in which they met. Jesus doesn't use that term synagogue. He uses the term Ecclesia, which means called out those who are called out because his church is not buildings. His church are people and they are people that have been called out. You know, our salvation is because of his calling us to him. You know, we like to think about and talk about us seeking God but the reality is, is that it's God seeking us through Christ that draws us into salvation. Uh, and so each one of us is called out. We're, we're to be separate and distinct from the rest of the world. And, and one of the things that makes us separate and distinct is that collective nature of being called out, of being a part of a group that is called out. Why, do, why does the church exist? To glorify God. To glorify God? 
the, the church exists so that it brings each of us into a closer relationship with God through Christ. Don't think you can do this on your own. Don't think that this is just about you and Jesus. Jesus uses, Christ uses, God uses every one of the people that you come in contact with in order to grow that relationship with him. The, the church, the body, Jesus tells us that we're, that we are a body made up of many members and that each of those members has different roles, has different functions. If this were just about you and God, if it were just about the brain, you wouldn't need the legs, you wouldn't need the arms, you wouldn't need the mouth, you wouldn't need the hands. But the brain doesn't survive very long without the legs and the arms and the hands and the mouth and those other things that help sustain it. So it's, it's not just about you and your individual relationship with God. It's about you and your relationship with God as a part of that greater body that he has called. The church exists to grow our relationship one with another. How do people know you're a Christian? You know, Jesus only said there's one way. By your love, one for another. He didn't say that, that people will know you're a Christian by the doctrine you believe in. He does. He, uh, Jesus didn't say uh, he'll know you're a Christian by uh, the rules you keep. Uh, he didn't say they'll know you're a Christian by the buildings you go to on Sunday morning, uh, uh, the, the people you hang out. All of those things may be indications, but the only thing that tells the rest of the world that you're a Christian is the love you have one for another. And how do you first and foremost express that love one for another? By coming together in fellowship. By sharing in the experiences of glorifying God and of worshiping God. Uh, it, 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 by coming together uh, to, to grow that relationship with God through Bible study. Uh, through, through all of those, you know, one of the things I, I, I've got to echo what, what Jimmy said, you know, we have a church that literally almost has something for everybody in terms of, of things to do, activities, a way to participate, a way to become engaged, whether you go to SALT as a senior adult or whether you come because you've got a drug addiction and you, or, or, or an alcohol addiction and you go to one way. There's a path. There's a way in. Uh, but at the end, it's all for the same purpose. It doesn't matter if you're going to, to, to salt or you're going to one way. The purpose is to draw you into a closer, closer relationship with God through Christ. And bring others. And, and, and well, for the purpose of mm -hmm. to grow God's relationship with those who are lost. Ultimately, God is calling you out in, other, in order to reach others. When the Bible refers to the, the church as the body of Christ, that's not just a metaphor. Christ's physical body does not exist on this earth anymore. Christ's physical body was resurrected and ascended to heaven. There is no physical Christ here to share the message that he brought when he was physically walking this earth. That exists in his church. We are the physical body through which he exercises the power 
to share the message that he shared with the rest of the world. That's the, the whole purpose of God creating a physical body, a church. What does it take to be a part of the church? What is required? Church in. Only two things. We only have two requirements. Repentance and belief. That's all it takes. We, we, don't, we don't have uh, any... Yeah, we, we have special actions. But we have things that we do. We believe in uh, baptism by submersion. But as anybody in the, in, on the staff, as the pastor will tell you, baptism doesn't save anybody. Yeah, those, those, there's no magic in that water. Yeah, it, it, it starts with repentance. <laughs> what, what does that word repentance mean? Does anybody know? Yeah, actually the literal translation is rethink. Turn your mind. You know, it, 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 and, and I think sometimes people confuse that with meaning turning your actions. It doesn't mean do different. It means think different. And it starts with a positional change in your uh, perspective. All of us are naturally inclined to a perspective that starts with me. We see the world from a me perspective. How does that impact me? What's in it for me? What, you know, what does this mean to me? That turn is me is no longer the center of your universe. Christ becomes the center of your universe. And so we see things in a different perspective. To repent means that, that we now see the world through the eyes of Christ. And what's the first thing you will see if you see the world through the eyes of Christ? That, you're a sinner. that you are filthy and full of sin. That's the first thing you will see. And, and that means there's got to be some solution to that. There's got to be some remedy for that. It, it, Christ cannot abide in something that is filthy and full of sin. But Christ solved that problem. Christ sacrificed Christ paid the price to cleanse that filthy sin that we couldn't pay. And understanding that and recognizing that and, and shifting your worldview, your perspective from the perspective of me to the perspective of Christ and seeing the world through the eyes of Christ is that first step of repentance. The second piece of that is none of that makes a bit of sense None of that means a thing unless you believe what? That he's taken care of that. That he's done what you're not capable of doing. That, that you believe that God came down in a physical manifestation, that he came down in a physical being, that he had a body through Christ just like yours. He lived a life just like you lived a life that he hung on a cross, that, it, that his life was different because it wasn't covered with sin. It was pure. Jesus did only that which his father told him to do. Yet in spite of that, he hung on a cross and he died because there was a price to be paid for that sin that's in your life that stands between you and that relationship with God. And, and that on the third day after being buried, he was resurrected because he overcame <clears throat> sin, he overcame death, and, and he 
ascended into heaven. And that that, that act, that fact, is the thing that makes it possible for you to have a right relationship with God. That's all that's required for membership in the church. It, it doesn't matter whether your congregation votes on membership. It doesn't matter if your congregation has special studies that you need to go through. It doesn't matter if your denomination has tests that you should pass. None of that makes any difference. What means you're called out, what makes you a member of the church, is that you have repented and believed. And that alone qualifies you for membership in Christ's church. A guy by the name of Tim Keller said that Christianity is the only uh, organization or, or group where your identity is received, not achieved. You are identified as a Christian by your love one for another and by the fact that you belong to Christ. He bought you, he paid for you, and he is now the Lord of your life. If not, then maybe you didn't repent. Maybe you don't believe. Because that's the sole criteria is that your whole view has changed because you're no longer your master. You're no longer in charge of your life. He is in charge of your life. Hopefully I at least touch the high points of the church as the church is gathered and as the church believes questions or comments about that, how that relates to you and how that relates to our group that we refer to as First Baptist Jonesboro. Well put. <laughs> yeah. it, the words aren't mine. Uh, You know, sometimes I think we can just get a little too comfortable. God doesn't call us to be comfortable. God calls us to be uncomfortable. Because if he's calling you, he's calling you to things that you are afraid of. He's calling you to things you're incapable of. He's calling you to situations that you would rather not be in. Uh, because only when you are engaged in those things that you are afraid of, uncomfortable with, don't want to do, is he working through you. If you're comfortable, it's because you're doing it. If you're uncomfortable, it's because he's doing it. All right. We've got a little bit of time left unless y'all want to uh, uh, discuss that further to talk about uh, uh, Second Samuel. All right, turn in your Bibles to uh, uh, chapter 14 of the book of Second Samuel. Last week, we, we saw where uh, Absalom had, had, had killed Amnon where the word came back to David that all of his sons had been killed. Uh, and, and then uh, we, we see uh, uh, Jonadab showing up and saying, oh, no, no, it's not, uh, it, it's not that bad. Just, just Abner. He's the only one that got killed. And we ended with it telling us that Absalom fled and went to Geshur and stayed there three years. He, he went to his father-in-law's he, 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 grandfather. 
Thank you, Tom. <laughs> he went to his grandfather, went to his father's father-in-law. Uh, he went, went to his grandfather's. Uh, uh. Why, did, why didn't Absalom seek refuge in one of the cities of refuge? Yeah. This cities of refuge weren't for those who uh, committed premeditated murder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the city. We, we're gonna we're gonna see that in in, in the story <laughs> that 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 or, or or what happens next in 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 fourteen one. It says that Joab, son of Zariah. Uh, knew that the king's heart longed for Absalom. So Joab sent someone to Tekoa and had a wise woman brought from there. Now, I have to confess to you, I wanted to do a little word study on wise woman. Hey, you better watch it. <laughs> See if it was an actual thing. <laughs> I got I got a little distracted by what uh, what, what I felt God was calling me to do this morning instead of my own now desire. Now God was speaking to you. <laughs> right. now, what what I what I wanted to know was what that word wise what that what that meant because no no doubt the woman that Joab reached out to was wise. Uh, she was also wily. Uh, yeah, yeah. She, 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 yeah. I, I don't think so. I, I don't think that, the, and that was part of what I wanted to look at. I don't think that the connotation here is that uh, uh, that that she was in any way uh, occult. Yeah, part of the occult or involved in any of that. Just simply that. She was a pretty smart lady, and 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 she knew how to handle herself, and she knew how to handle herself in the presence of the king, because what what Joab does is it says uh, he said to her, "Pretend you are in mourning, dress in mourning clothes, and don't use any cosmetic lotions. Act like a woman who has spent many days grieving for the dead." Then go to the king and speak these words to him. And Joab put the words in her mouth. So, to me, that would not be a wise woman. Well, but here's the th here's the thing that if it, 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 that I challenge you to, uh, with this morning is as you look at this unfold, is there really anything in here that she's saying that is necessarily untrue? I'm not so sure that she hadn't actually lived these things. She may not have actually been in the situation. I don't, I don't know what may have been going on with the rest of the family. And those, but, I, but I get the sense through this that her husband is dead and that she does have a son that's killed her other son. I, I, I think those things may very well be, be true. Not that Joab just made those up. That Joab may have utilized the circumstances in which she found herself to have her bring this message to David. Why do you think Joab went out and found somebody else to do this instead of Joab simply going to the king and telling David, here's, here's the problem. Here's what you need to do. He might have thought, you know, that's not going to, you know, he might have been wise and thought there that's was, not going to There's issues work. between Joab and David. There's issues between Joab and David. And, 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 Telling the king what to do is not necessarily always the right way to get it, the wisest way to get it done. Yeah, because regardless of what you may think, he's still the king. And, and your opinion is unimportant. Uh, and do you remember how Nathan approaches David? You know, what, what's apparent is that 
those close to David have figured out that David has a hard time seeing himself. He has a hard time seeing the sin in his own life. But if you hold up somebody else's sin in front of him, he, he's quick to see that, and then he's more likely to recognize his own sin in that than if you simply confront him with his own sin. So when the woman from Tekoa went to the king, she fell on her face to the ground to pay him honor, and she said, Help me, O king. The king asked her, What is troubling you? She said, I am indeed a widow. My husband is dead. I, your servant, had two sons. They got into a fight with each other in the field, and no one was there to separate them. One struck the other and killed him. Now the whole clan has risen up against your servant. They say, hand over the one who struck his brother down so that we may put him to death for the life of his brother whom he killed. Then we will get rid of the heir as well. They would put out the only burning coal I have left, leaving my husband neither name nor descendant on the face of the earth. What, what's this lady's problem? Other than she's got a dysfunctional family. Yeah. She's really describing David. She is describing David, but but the problem she's facing is that her husband is dead. In the culture of the time, who's responsible for taking care of her? If, her if sons. it's true. If, if it's if true. She's if, telling it, the truth. if she's I mean, telling she's the truth. Just... Yeah. But in the culture, what David would have perceived is that. If your husband is dead, it's your son's responsibility to take care of you. And, and where does the husband's estate, where does what he owns go upon his death? Does it go to the widow? No, it goes to the eldest son. And so, uh, so uh, now her sons have gotten into a fight and one son has killed the other son. So one son is already gone, and now the rest of the clan, now who's the clan? The family. Yeah, the rest of her family is saying, turn over your remaining son that he might be put to death for having killed his brother. What's her problem? She won't have anybody. She, not only will she not she be left widowed and childless. But what happens to her husband's estate? It goes to the clan. Brother. <laughs> That's <laughs> right, it goes to the clan. So, so the motivation behind the others wanting her to turn over her son so that they might put him to death is not necessarily driven by what God's requirements for justice are, but what seems to work well for the family. If we get him out of the way, we'll have her husband's estate. And we're going to stop right there. <laughs> Next week, we'll, we'll do what we did this week. We'll, we'll cover a couple of more of, of, the, uh, uh, of the lessons on the church, and then we'll pick back up with this uh, story about the uh, woman and David. Any, any questions? About what I'm doing, or why I'm doing it, or or the actual lessons in themselves. Thank y'all for bearing with me. We're gonna pick up on the six or seven. Uh, or yeah, yeah. Do I close my Bible. That's all right. I know where I'm going. Phil, would you close us with a prayer this morning? Thank you, Lord, for this day, this day of worship. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you provide. Thank you, Lord, for the services this morning, and we just ask that you would open the eyes of the people that are attending that haven't yet received you, and that they will become more aware of what they need to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. What, what, one, other, one other quick thing that I just I, I forgot to tell you. Uh, our our classes are still not yet being live streamed, uh, but they are online and and you can see them by going to and I'll write this on the board it's YouTube at life
groups, capital J. I'll put it on the board, but you Google that and, and they'll, they'll come up and you can watch them via YouTube if you care to do that. Thank you. Appreciate it. It, it's, it's got a battery back in the charge. That's it. 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 I'm glad that you do it so good, all right? You look like my You look like my father. 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 You look like my yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you go get it? Bringing and writing. That stuff works pretty good in about three or four years after it's been up there. Oh, I don't know where I've got to live in Riverdale. I've been for many years. Many years. I said it was good when I'm sorry. I've lived there most of my life, too. Well, if you live on, on Upper Riverdale Road, you might remember, I don't know how long you've lived there, the Gerards. I went to school with Eddie Gerard, and I know oh, his yeah. dad lived down there. I haven't talked with him about it yet. I don't know if he's still living or where he died. You know, you know, know Johnny, his older brother, who was in my class, okay. married my cousin. Oh, did he? Mm -hmm. he play football or, or yeah, he played football. For Johnny, Johnny and I played football together. Oh, oh my goodness. And um, I can't remember his daddy's name, but he preached at the little church that yeah, my family went to for a long time.